Welcome back. So South Africa has a new Speaker of the National Assembly. Nosivibe Mapisa Nakula was elected with 199 votes today. The DA fielded an opposing candidate who got 82 votes. The EFF did not take part in the process. The position became vacant when President Cyril Ramaphosa appointed the Speaker Tandi Modise as Defence Minister, which is Mapisa Nakula's old post. To discuss, we're joined by the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly of the Republic of South Africa, Lachisa Tsenoli. Uh, thank you for being with us, uh, Deputy Speaker. So there were these last minute uh, legal challenges. Uh, we will be speaking to the New Nation uh, movement opposed to this and opposition parties were, were opposed. Um, uh, did, did that put a damper on events uh, today? Were you happy with uh, the proceedings? Well, the proceedings went ahead as planned. Uh, roughly, we complied with the requirements of the law, and the threat by lawyers, uh, in our opinion, did not amount to sufficient grounds to stop the proceedings of Parliament, and that they constituted partly a political objection rather than a legal constitutional one. If, where it was the constitutional, we took a different view and felt that what we had done was within the law and the Constitution. Yeah. So, yes, it went more or less according to plan. Uh, and navigating around being safe in the midst of a pandemic with so many parliamentarians yeah. back in, inside? Yes, we, we sought to comply as much as possible. Distance between members. Uh, not all members were inside the House. Others were in the gallery and others were in the next room, which is B249, which is on the second floor. And as a workplace, these are the requirements that uh, we should not have a full complement uh, of staff. Our staff only is 1,300 and we have uh, 490 members. And so we had uh, uh, less than half of those present in the, in the, inside, the, inside the hall, and uh, we think we complied with their requirements. Of mm -hmm. course, there, are, there were instances where people were too close to each other, and uh, we had to warn people to comply from inside the house. All right. Once the election was done, Mapisa Nakula uh, got up. She, she said a lot of the right things. Uh, however, can she really play a unifying role and, and respect uh, all parties, as she said, if she was so soundly rejected by opposition parties coming in? Your opinion? Well, well no. This is a, a parliament is a political institution. The previous speaker... Uh, were never necessarily universally accepted. They were also challenged politically about their objective or not, uh, and or not. And so uh, the practice is going to be what makes the difference, not what uh, they predicted would happen or otherwise. The undertaking to work to, uh, with honor. We hope that uh, in her new role, and she did say that uh, the transition from the executive to the, to the Speaker of the National Assembly is a challenge for her, and she'll be working towards ensuring that uh, she's able to satisfy all parties, not only political parties, but staff, as well as working good relationship with the National Council of Province, as well as working with the public in general, in a manner that demonstrates her uh, role, or her new role as a Speaker, and so on. Yeah. Uh, we do expect uh, disagreement will arise in the course of uh, parliamentary work. And this is one instance where it was, uh, as, as, so to speak, quite loud. <laughs> All right, so we may see, see more of that. What about the fact that as the former defence minister, she's actually on Parliament's radar? So the Joint Standing Committee on Defence uh, investigating what went wrong uh, around the looting. Perhaps more importantly, the Joint Standing Committee on Defence has appointed a team to look at claims of corruption against her. Uh, what happens then since she's, she's Speaker? Is, is it just a matter of her respecting um, that investigation and, and trying to stay away from it? Ma'am, there is no, uh, let's put it this way first, there is no legal ground on us to now uh, uh, question her status. She's already been in there, 
uh, elected, we just elected him, and as a fellow presiding officer, our job is to uh, ensure that what her is carrying out her duty as is expected of her. The other issue that relates to investigation uh, to determine her guilt or otherwise is that it's an investigation. So it shouldn't get into the way of that work being done. All right, finally, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, do you feel overlooked at all? Yeah, Would you yeah. have liked this, uh, this role? They want to prevent things yeah. happening. No. Uh, the Joint Standing Committee uh, on Defence and the Joint Standing Committee on Parliament itself have responsibility uh, to act in an objective manner. And the public and political parties will be involved appropriately as and when those locations arise. Yeah. Right now, it's speculation and prediction of things about which all of us can only uh, do educated guesses of what is likely to happen. Uh, we may be vindicated or not. So it's speculation. Uh, as we speak now, we hope that uh, the best we should do is to create conditions to support her to act as she undertook to will in an objective, impartial manner as a presiding officer, navigating the fact that uh, from a career point of view, she comes from inside the executive, uh, she's entering the presiding officer state, so there is a transition that will mean that she might falter along the way, but the important thing is to acknowledge the possibility of that thing, but also that she will uh, self-correct as she goes along, effectively, this is what I understood her to be saying. All right, thank you for that response. We actually lost your, your sound for a little while, so I threw in a final question. Um, maybe you can answer that, that now. Do you feel overlooked at all? Would you have liked this role, sir? No, no, ma'am. When, when the decision is made to, to have someone uh, take over the job of a presiding officer, it is important that we support him. Uh, this story is about uh, whether, uh, the story, whether I would have liked it or not. It's completely irrelevant now, quite frankly. What's relevant in my humble opinion is that uh, she's elected. We now have a new leader. I remain in the spot to provide her support as the constitution uh, commander. So I will do that to the best of my ability as I did in the past. All right, thank you very much, uh, the Deputy Speaker, Lechesa Tsenoli, uh, for us there about the election of the Speaker today. Well